Velma getting a season two is like awarding Idi Amin a Nobel Peace Prize. It is one of the few television shows where it is factually correct to state that it is one of the most hated television shows of all time. Last year, we had a great time dancing around the bonfire that was season one. I have genuinely never in my life seen such universal disdain for a series. And though it pains me to admit this, the unanimity of the backlash to Velma was greater than that of even Rings of Power. And if you were there for that, you know how nuts that statement is. Usually, new movies and TV shows go on a large swathes of hate for pandering and catering to audiences who don't care for, or in a lot of cases, just outright despise the IPs that these ESG-dependent parasites use as skin suits to make money. And Velma is certainly no exception to this rule. Mindy Kaling used the Velma series in order to pander harder than a Libyan dictator stuck in a drainpipe. Even Chinese conservation levels of pandering couldn't save her from the tsunami that was the Scooby-Doo fanbase. And believe me, I'd know. I one time during my review of season one accidentally called the Mystery Machine and the Mystery Mobile and those absolute maniacs did to my cheeks whatever Moses did to the sea and gave me a biblical ass blasting. But forgiving a handful of maniacs, the Scooby-Doo fanbase, very much like the charge of the Rahiram at Helm's Deep, joined we, the terminally online, in battle and Velma was swiftly and decisively vanquished. The show, a bloodied ornament that was hung upon the YouTube homepage and displayed as a prize catch by we, the fishermen. Mindy Jinky just a little too close to the sun and that was the end of Velma. That was, at least, until about a week ago where I awoke to what I can only describe as a barrage of at least two whole text messages telling me, have you seen the news? And to my, as well as I would imagine most of the internet's surprise, HBO had actually gone ahead with and dropped a season two of Velma. I had genuinely written the rumours of a season two off as simply Friday Night Tights jet fuel copium, but slap me and call me Susan, HBO actually went ahead and did it. Lord knows why, but here we are. So without further ado, let's take a look at Velma season two. How bad can it be? And with what I would say is a pretty appropriate start to a Scooby-Doo spin-off, the show kicks off with some sort of freakish ghoul. What brings you to our grisly crime scene? Well, I'm Amber, and I just moved here with my mom. Oh, wait, no, actually, I think that's just supposed to be a human woman. But you look so cool, Amber. But you look so cool. But you look so cool, Amber. I prefer really not to, um, not to speak. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. In big trouble. And I don't want to be in big trouble. Honestly, I swear. Modern movie makers won't be happy until every single woman in entertainment looks like Chris Tucker in The Fifth Element. Ugh. What's that, brother? Ugh. Brother, ugh. And of course, this wouldn't be the Velma series without Velma herself being connivingly manipulative towards the emasculated simp that is Norville. If you've been ignoring me because I told you I love you and then said it was an accident, even more reason to talk. But just in case casual audiences start to think, hang on just a moment, this Velma person doesn't seem like a very nice person. They have other characters tell you how wonderful she is. Velma, is that you? Or have kids wised up and started copying your brilliant mix of brains and bangs? And they're still doubling down on the completely overt and unfunny joke that Norville, well, Norville's dad, who looks remarkably like Shaggy. Hmm, I wonder if he's supposed to be, he's supposed to be Shaggy. Uh, they're doubling down on the whole joke that there are perusers of that good good. You have to forgive yourself, and more importantly, smoke all that weed I gave you. It helps. Oh, I so am. Oh my God, you get it guys, because, uh, you know, a lot of people think that Shaggy smokes weed and it was just never mentioned and it's a big joke in the fan base and has been for a long time and you get you get no honestly it's really funny how do you do fellow kids what and now a quick word from today's sponsor and this video is brought to you by squarespace the all-in-one website creation platform which is designed to be as easy to use as possible so even you Yes, you over there with no web design skills, even you can have your very own shiny looking professional website up and running in a matter of minutes. You can utilize Squarespace's comprehensive tutorials and templates, or you can even hire one of Squarespace's experts to help polish off your website or even help build one from scratch for you. Whatever your needs or skill level, Squarespace will help you to get to where you want to be in no time at all. And for those of you who are a little more savvy, you can take full advantage of the Squarespace design suite, track in-depth analytics, seamlessly integrate your favorite applications and even edit your website on the go from the Squarespace app. So to get you started, head on over to squarespace.com forward slash Johnny Law and use code Johnny Law at checkout to get 10% off your first website or domain. And a big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video.
So in the first season, the character of Norville was portrayed as this emasculated simp and was used as a beat stick for Fred to call a nerd, but apparently in season two, in some sort of repentance for this apparent behavior, apparently Norville's hot now? Under his dorky demeanor, bad clothes, and good grades, he is objectively hot. His bone structure's insane. Are you sure about that? And in what is a hilarious twist, Fred has now become a Catholic. Cause Freddy's partnered up with another smoking hot white dude. Jesus. Oh boy, I'm sure that plot point won't become a comedic punching bag. And if the church has taught me anything, it's to question nothing. Wow, jokes about Catholicism. That's not been the norm in comedy for like more than 20 years at this point. How stunning and brave. Now, um, do the same for that other religion. Go ahead. A day. You won't. And just when you think it couldn't get any more brave and stunning, remember the really cool character from earlier? But you look so cool, Amber. Step back, I think I'm gonna vomit! <laughs> well, she's helping Asian Daphne's mothers run for sheriff. <laughs> Get it? Because sheriff has the word she in it. <laughs> like, like the gender. What is your gender? My gender. Mm. I'm a mechanic. You know, I would make fun of the whole sheriff thing for being a complete non sequitur, having nothing to do with whether you're worthy or qualified for the job. But the truth is, these days, if you don't look like me or have my genetic makeup, that's a pretty good start if you want a job, so <laughs> fair play, I guess. Amber does have a certain magnetism about them. Oh great, more verbal reinforcement from other characters that Amber is definitely cool and is absolutely in no way completely hideous to look at. Your eyes are just lying to you. Stop being evil. You look so cool, Amber. Amber does have a certain magnetism you about them. So Amber does cool, have a certain Amber magnetism so cool, about them. Amber does have a... Help. Let me sick. Get something for me to be sick in. I am, of course, completely joking. Come on, guys. Everyone loves it when women wear baggy clothes, black lipstick, shave their heads, leave whatever little hair they do have left and dye that a crazy bright color. Everyone loves that. I love that. You love that. Everyone loves that, right, guys? Every man over 50 looks the same to me. Oh, yeah, no, no, because uh, when you think about it, I mean, like, uh, Eddie Murphy and Robert Smith. I mean, they're practically twins. I can't tell the difference. But on a serious note, though, guys, uh, you know, I would consider myself to be a connoisseur of stereotypes. I use them all. I mean, I study them all the time. And, uh, you know, I, I've, n I've not actually heard that one before. Do all men over 50 look the same? Is that is that a thing? <laughs> I've, I've literally never heard anyone say that before, but I don't know. And you'd travel in a pack, too, if people kept trying to recycle you. Hey, I'm glass, not plastic, idiot. But you can recycle glass and plastic. I don't understand the joke. Tradition, religion, superstition. When you remove the fun hats and free wine, they're just about controlling people with fear. Wow, what a remarkably unbased and surface level take on tradition and religion. Tradition is not about controlling people with fear you utter maniacs. It's a social glue. It's an adhesive that binds a society together. Tradition is about respecting the sacrifice of your ancestors because their actions and beliefs birthed the societies in which you live. Their work gave you a head start in life. So we carry that baton in the hopes that if we follow in their footsteps, that one day when we pass that baton on to the next generation, maybe we can do the same for them as our ancestors did for us. When you remove the fun hats and free wine, they're just about controlling people with fear. Look, I'm not a God-fearing man myself, but if your take is that the only redeeming quality about religion Religion is free wine. <laughs> There's no help in you. I don't know what to tell you. Like, go outside, read a book, travel more. Like, you know, religion gave us St. Peter's Basilica. Whatever Mindy believes in gave us Velma. <laughs> Which way, man of the West? Then, now Asian Velma and the definitely not hideous Amber discover that not only the fact that a teacher and the sheriff have been murdered, but both of them have had their gentleman sausages removed. Amber was probably quite excited by that idea. We found Cogburn and Mr. S, and they're not only dead, they're... <gasps> their dongs were removed. This is almost as bad as girls having their brains removed. Accidentally based Velma? Also, the show's whole shtick is... Oh, man, it's, it's, it's so boring. This is how it goes. Exposition, joke attached to the end. That's it. Every single line in this show, without fail, is a character explaining what's about to happen or what just happened, Shitty joke attached to the end, and that's it. Every single line. Daphne and Amber found their bodies while oiling hinges, meaning my decision to violate the rules of Creaky Friday are even more validated. Yeah, boy! Two men are dead, Velma. Either I'm way more out of touch than I thought I was, or this show is just making up stereotypes at this point. Lola? 
What are you doing here? Has skateboarding caused you to smoke and be shitty to women? Skateboard is being shitty to women is yet another trope. I've genuinely not heard that before. I've actually genuinely never heard that stereotype before. You guys will have to enlighten me if that's a thing. But what happened? Tony Hawk kickflip his wife or something? What? I don't understand. My whole life, nothing has made me angrier than rich people. Damn it. Get out your bingo sheets, boys. There it goes. Of course, the totally not tired trope that rich equals evil. Of course, that is how Velma feels. Why is it always the quote unquote progressive shows that judge people unbelievably harshly solely on their income and not their character? I don't know what it is, but Hollywood writers these days physically, they physically can't write a female character without also making her a commie. But, you know, at least Velma admits it. You know I hate the rich. I'd be a communist if I didn't want to kill my lazy teammates on every group project. I think you mean our teammates? For the life of me, genuinely, I do not understand why this guy is holding that sign. For context, this scene takes place at a science fair. There has been no mention of politics, yet here we are. I have no idea. Mindy really hijacked Scooby-Doo and turned it into a pseudo-intellectual self-insert struggle session. I am so unbelievably puzzled. Face it, Amber, you staged everything. How could they? They've been with us the whole time. Wait, just a minute. None of that is true. Yeah, they didn't do it, Velma. So you're telling me that this Amber character, this one, is a day slash them. There is not even a single defining factor about this individual that could possibly ever have led me to reach the conclusion that they are a they. That's pretty crazy. I didn't know that, I just, uh, you're telling me now for the first time. So, the men of the town have all got together to burn the they slash them because they believe that she's a witch. <laughs> That's an actual plot point. Thanks to you, I'm going to be burned alive! <gasps> Bring out the witch! Now I'm well aware that the intention of this scene is to make men look hot-headed, brainless, and belligerent, but it's unintentionally hilarious. The idea of they slash them turning up to this little middle of nowhere town, slapping their pronouns on the table, and the town turn around and go, she's a witch, burn the witch. <laughs> That is utterly hilarious. And if you thought that was stupid, get a load of this. So it turns out that Norville's grandma has secretly been alive for the last 30 years and has been part of a secret experiment where she's been removing soldiers' brains, leaving them in a jar for a bit, and then sticking them back in. And in doing so, this allows the soldiers to find their true selves. And they all end up leaving the military because of this. Because... Yeah, whose real calling in life would ever be to do something like protecting their country and their loved ones? Who'd ever want to do something like that? So, we're on to episode 5 of season 2 of Belma, and so far it's not really gone anywhere, plot-wise particularly, but it has made very sure to establish the fact that it's anti-capitalism, nuclear family, tradition, religion, rich people, and now the military. Because apparently only people with unwashed brains would ever consider pursuing a career in the military. That's, oh, wow, that's such a great take. Wow, <laughs> I love that. But just before you give up on it, the show does respect weird people's pronouns. And that's pretty cool. We'd rather destroy anyone who points out our delusions than admit we might be wrong. Unintentionally based? And then, in what I can only describe as the classic Velma move, Velma manages to single-handedly dispel the angry mob wanting to burn everyone by telling them they all have little weenus. Velma, is this post true that all the victims were better endowed than a public broadcasting service? But to be more specific, Velma and the policeman women lie to the public about the motive of the killer by insinuating the fact that they only target people with big dongs. And that means that all of the angry men with peckers leave and then everyone claps, I presume, and probably gets murdered because that wasn't the actual motive of the murderer. The killer is only targeting men with huge dongs. So if you don't have a huge dong, stay here as long as you want. <laughs> this show fucking sucks. Telling the truth always feels better, which is great. Well, Velma, if telling the truth is so important, why don't you tell us all the truth and tell us what your ESG score is, huh? Huh? I bet whatever it is, it's more than your Rotten Tomatoes score. Ha! <laughs> Got him. And then, the big plot twist of the series, and it turns out that the killer was Scrappy-Doo 
all along, who actually makes for an unintentionally fitting villain, as he's a perfect reflection of the Velma series itself. A vicious, malicious, ugly, mutilated rendition of something that was once sweet and beloved. Not to mention the fact that they stole the whole idea of Scrappy being the villain from the 2002 movie anyway. What was once cute is now difficult to even look at. And if that doesn't sum up Velma season one and two, I don't know what does. The one thing all true sociopaths love, a bachelor party. Wait, what? If you enjoy a bachelor party, you're a sociopath now. <laughs> okay. The requirements for sociopath have, they've become a bit more lenient in recent years, apparently, because the last time I checked, there was a little bit more to it than that. And what the hell is wrong with having a bachelor party? I don't get any of these stereotypes. According to the Velma show, all men over 50 look the same, skateboarders all abuse women, and now, if you go to or have a bachelor party, you're a sociopath. Call me crazy, but I think Mindy might be just a little bit out of touch. You were haunting me? As if living white women don't already haunt me enough? This moment, why you so care? Other people look at me, I don't know. Well, that was a bit out of pocket. Like, again, though, I, I, I genuinely don't understand. Like, I've, n I've never heard that stereotype before. Is, is there a thing that white women haunt black guys? Is that a thing? If you think this is insane, wait until you hear my plan. I don't think you caught that guy. Hang on, let me play that back. You see, because on the helicopter, it says Helifant, because Helifant is a portmanteau of helicopter and Elifant. Helifant? Elifant? Ah, it's just a bit too highbrow. You don't get it. But, uh, you know, with all this class A comedy being knocked out of the park, I feel, uh... I feel another unfounded stereotype coming on. She burns the novels by sexist male authors, which is most of them. Oh, cool. That's a good one. Most male authors are sexist. And we know this because... Because Velma told us. Ah! <laughs> that's, so, that's so good. Well done, guys. Oh, my God. I don't know how you did it, but you did it. Here we are. Oh, it's a great time to be alive. Hey. <gasps> Oh yeah, and don't forget, all guys are creeps. Because, I mean, of course they are. Thank you. Thank you, Velma. Very, very brave. Very cool. Thank you. Anyway, Velma is then killed by Scrappy and becomes a ghost. And that tees up the possibility for a season three. Are you as excited as I am? I, you probably are. Well, I've got to hand it to Mindy. Season two was as uneducated, clumsy, and as occasionally malicious as season one. So, points for consistency, I guess. But my God, this show has no place being a Scooby-Doo spin-off. To use a term that was coined by someone who Hollywood is very fond of these days, we need to kick out the Hollywood bourgeoisie and all of these fake fans out of our favorite fandoms to once and for all put a stop to these toe-curling fan fictions. Gatekeep more, and I'll see you in the next one. And as always, a big shout out to the patrons and the channel members. We have the top tiers. These are the knights of lore. We've got Infinite Dum Dum, Puzzle Bomb, Flunky, David, Jax, Cos, Michael Turpia, Texas Lawman, ATS, Daggerty69, nice. Saint Nemo, Steve the Goat, Nystagmus, Michael, the Grand Admiral, Jordan62, and Satama Kano. To each and every one of the Tier 1s, I thank you for serving the realm. The Tier 2s, we've got Sayid, Dr. Melsky, Yon, which had you, Canada Grammachi, Mark Maiden, Sensei Fang, Mendicant Bias, Agent MO62, Stu Cheeks, Michael S, Rich Walwick, McLegend Face, McLegend Face, sorry, Kidnap Tiger, and we're welcoming Mona to the Tier 2. It's great to have you. And of course, a big thank you to each and every one of the tier ones. To everyone on this list, thank you for going out of your way to support me. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. And there we go. Another day, another video. Will you join me for my next one? You better do. You little bitch, you. But until then, take care of yourselves and I'll see you very soon.